ions. All right, and uh, naming ions. So uh, monatomic ions, literally, <laughs> one of my favorite words, one atom ions. And so um, all of the uh, ions, so all metal ions, Um, uh, in groups one and two the name of the element is the name of the ion so Here's sodium. The ion is named the sodium ion. And we know that all these are plus one, these are plus two, minus three, minus two, minus one. Oh, plus three, aluminum. Now, um, I think I did my spacing a little strange here. Um, so the, the name of the ion here, so Fe, we said that, um, oh, we're gonna deal with Fe on the next page, I just remembered. So now let's deal with the negative ions. So all non-metal monatomic ions All non-metal monatomic ions end in IDE. So uh, oxygen becomes oxide and it's O2 minus. Fluorine becomes fluoride. And uh, it doesn't matter that much, but the U does come before the O if you're spelling fluoride. Um, and nitrogen, which is nitride, N3 minus. And the IDE ending is a clue that you have a monatomic ion. Let's see, what else do we have to say for this one? I think that's it. So there's no substitute for memorizing your ion list, but there are some clues as to where they are on the periodic table. Now transition metal ions, most can have more than one charge. I've got my nomenclature list right here. And on my nomenclature list, uh, it says, um, here's copper. Nope, can you see that? Here's copper. And copper's got copper plus, which is called copper one ion. It's also got copper two plus, which is the copper two ion. I'll skip down to example two since I just did it. So uh, most have more than one charge. You must memorize the ones on the nomenclature list. There's actually a ton more, but um, we just have you memorize the ones on the nomenclature list. That should be enough for now. Uh, this one here, the name is copper one. Or copper I, it's Roman numeral one. And for the homework, I have you put in copper with no space between the R and the parenthesis for all of the homework problems, okay? So if you wanna get the right answer and you'll see it quickly enough, there is no space there. It is okay to put a space as well. But in general, so the but in general in the homework to keep things simple, I didn't want to put a space in there because that's just one more thing. Here we have copper 2. Again with no space. Copper 2 and whenever there's more than one choice, you use Roman numerals. to differentiate, to tell them apart.
So, um, and then here, so for copper, it's plus one plus two. For iron, it's two plus and three plus. Uh, but whatever the charge is, oh, I guess I should say use Roman numerals for, so as the charge. I hope that makes sense. So the it's not how many there are in the compounds. It is the charge. So, and we'll see that. But iron has a charge of two. So it gets a Roman numeral two. Iron three has a charge of three. It gets a Roman numeral three. The thing in parentheses is the charge. Um, and that's going to be for almost all of the transition metals. There aren't that many of them. It looks like nickel, iron, chromium, tin, lead. Well, as I name them, there are a number of them. But, um, uh, but there are two oddballs. These are transition metals that are on your list that only have one choice. If there's only one choice, like for sodium and magnesium, there are, so we never use... Roman numerals if there's only one choice. The Roman numerals are used to differentiate two possibilities. So this is just the zinc ion. This is just the silver ion. There is no Roman numerals for these, which means unfortunately more memorization, I think. Hmm. Um, anyway, we made the list as small as possible for you to memorize but it's still useful as you move forward. Polyatomic ions are bonded together to form an ion. And again, I think you're just gonna have to memorize them. So this is gonna be the cyanide ion. This is gonna be nitrate ion. And in ionic compounds, one of the things that's going to be important, we will see, in addition to naming them, which we'll tackle in a few minutes. Um, so this uh, sodium cyanide has only two ions in it. Sodium plus and CN minus. And it will, you will be tempted to take it apart as sodium is one thing, C is another thing, N is a third thing, but as soon as you memorize your ions and their formulas, you will know that this only breaks up into two parts. And in general, ion, so ionic compounds will break up into only two things. Parentheses are helpful when they're there because that tells you that this thing stays together as one thing. Oop, excuse me, Tom. And once you memorize, and again, it's, it's significant work, I'm not gonna say otherwise, that nitrate is a minus one ion, and you can see that there are two of them, it will help you figure out that magnesium is two plus, or you memorize that magnesium is two plus, and that means since there's two of them, nitrate just must be minus one. There are hints out there but the important thing I'm trying to get across right now is that cyanide is one thing, not two separate things. Same thing with nitrate.